All right, today we're going to look at the electric charging motor on the NT800 breaker. I've got the screws already loosened on the front cover. It's pretty straightforward. Just lift forward and you'll see the handle. You know, it kind of slides through the cover and it's going to stay in place on the, the breaker itself there. All right, kind of a couple things there. You see this one screw. It is a tamper-proof type screw, a special tip. So you got to have one of those neat little kits you get at the auto parts store or pick you one up. You back out the retaining screw and the little silver bar there, that's going to be what actually holds in the power control rail where all your power, uh, your control power comes into all the components. So pull your screw out, save that, you're definitely going to need that. You remove your rail, that rail is where all, as I said, Everything from under voltage shunt trip and shunt close and the charging motor all plug into that rail. So now we've got a retaining screw uh, for the motor and then we've got to make sure that we separate the power source. You can see the rail with all the different green and green and red and black leads going in. The two interior wires right there, the green and red, they go right by that silver screw. That is going to be your cutoff portion for your cutoff switch for your motor, your charging circuit. So we've got a little set screw. We, we back out of that guy. And that will allow us to set him free. The screw backs all the way out, but you want to, you want to leave it in the, in the switch itself because it's kind of small. Now we take the retainer out of the breaker motor. Back the whole assembly out. So you've got switch, rail, and motor in one big rat nest. You can see the timed shaft there we're pointing out. Okay, disconnect. This is the input for the motor charge portion. So it runs around, hits the, the motor and the armature, and then there's a little gearbox. So all the gearbox and motor stays together and separates from the control circuit. And again, there's that keyway I was talking about. You can see where it, it fits onto the shaft of the, the mechanism itself. Okay. That's the keyway right there, and that's the notch that you, it, it'll only, it's got to go on that notch. It's, it only goes one way. So you don't want to hit it with a hammer and drive it on. All right, switch, power rail, set them out of the way. Kind of give you a clean open cavity there for your new motor to go in. And this particular one is a 24 volt DC motor. Again, here's your keyway. A 24 volt DC. Um, this application is used a lot with uh, generator setups where you have a diesel generator and they'll have battery power for the generator. So you've got 24 volts DC on board, so most of your controls are usually 24 volt DC as well. All right, see this little switch? This is the little flipper. That's the part we're talking about that cuts the circuit off for your motor. You gotta actually put it in, reinstall it before you lock your motor in, because it's impossible to get this guy in there after you got your motor in. Let's just set him out of the way, make it easy. All right, set him in there. It's a little, I'll try to get you a better view here in just a second. But it goes in up under the handle. See that little silver flipper? It has to be on top. You'll see a little, there's a little gray button. It has to sit on top of that button. And when the mechanism moves, it operates that little flipper and that switch. And that's what operates your circuit. Your motor stops running. So it's a cutoff. Um, snug it down pretty good. It's got one little retainer. Once you get used to them, they're they're pretty neat to work on. Everything's pretty much simple one retainers. There again is a flipper. See, it's got free movement, which you don't have it in a bind. But most of these are pretty pretty straightforward to work on. Some of them can get you a little worked up. Yeah, 24 volt DC charging motor. Now I'm going to try to put this in without closing the breaker, but 
see i'm showing you right now that this one has a uv in or it would close because the breaker's charged you know, sometimes you can do it without closing the breaker since this one has a uv i would have to take the uv back it out a little bit to where the breaker can actually close that's what i'm going to do now just to make life easier you can see the flag moving there the yellow and white now I should be able to close my breaker. The UV's out of the way. Boop. There we go. Now that's going to allow. I'll show you that bar in a minute. If I line my tab up. I'm not all the way on, but I've started, so I know I'm. I know I'm timed to, to start on the shaft. That little silver bar is what's in the way. That's when you close the breaker. It goes out of the way and allows you a little more room to slide the motor straight on. Now this little, I'll show you the set screw in just a second. See it, watch it turn just a, and it goes all the way in. That allows you to seat the motor. Let me show you. On the side of the motor there, it's got this little bitty plastic screw. And it'll turn about one or two teeth on that plastic gear and it will fine tune your timing to let the motor slide all the way in place. So when you get it in, um, you do want to put the one motor retaining screw in get that guy locked down don't want anything flying out of there torque it down there now got a switch in got a motor in there's a screw now let's see that's your motor cord it's all a little rat nest in here but we're going to try to pack it in there ever so gently you see this notch there's a little notch on the back of the uh, power rail that actually right let's see if you can see it right there that plastic piece goes in that black groove it's almost like a dovetail or a little tongue and groove notch that allows it to slide in and that mounts one end of it it mounts the base of it of your power rail once you get it in place then you can put your little silver little L bracket on there they make them really snug but it all fits in there but you have to have it far enough in if you don't then your cover is going to be an issue when you can try to put your cover back on so get my motor charging motor plugged back in once it's plugged in, there's that screw I told you not to lose. I just poked it inside. Now put your retainer on there. Line all that stuff in there and finesse it. It's pretty straightforward from this point. Once you've got it all back in, once you you feel like you got to get a crowbar sometimes to cram it in there, but you get your retainer screw in there. It is going to plastic you just you know tighten it down don't want to get real over tight on these guys i've got my gun backed way down so it's just barely putting anything on it get it snug down get it all tightened back in place well, we've got an upcoming video um we're looking out for that one it's going to be about all of the control the, the other portions of the controls which are at the top you see I'm tightening the retainer down. This holds the, you saw the breaker trip. I was pushing the under voltage coil back into the mechanism. And that's what tripped the breaker. So now you've got a shunt trip, a shunt close, and an under voltage. All of those are packaged in that top compartment. We'll break those down in another video and kind of show you how that those operate and do. But for the sake of this, I've got to test this motor. I, I just don't feel right putting the cover on it. I've got to make sure that I've got everything timed back right, it runs correctly, it sounds right, it charges the breaker. So, since this one does have an under voltage coil, you have to energize a separate circuit and feed that under voltage coil. It's got its own little separate terminal strip here. So again, 24 volt DC. Get to stay on there. Power that guy up and then I'm going to take, you can't hear the can't hear the motor running in this video but you'll see I'm also adding the same 24 volts to my common on the end of the power rail and then we're going to run a charge circuit 
you'll see the flags move on the motor. We're going to charge the breaker. We'll run the motor. See it move the arm. You'll see the mechanism. It charged it. Close it. Trip it. We're going to charge it. We're going to do this a few times to make sure that everything sounds right, runs right. So we run charge. Make sure it charges the mechanism all the way. The cutoff switch works. Close it and trip it. Real simple. That's your UV again right there. Like I said, we'll cover that one in another video. I just took the power off of it and it freed the breaker up and tripped it open. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope this helps.